I'm here at Avnet's European Integration Centre here in Tongren, where we take technology from our leading vendors, uh, the line cards which we offer, and build them into business solutions for our partners to take to market to their customers. I'm here with, with VMware, EMC and APC by Schneider to talk about the kind of solutions our partners can take to market with and around vSpecs Blue. Let's hear what they've got to say. EMC's vSpecs Blue is a hyper-converged infrastructure appliance. It sits in EMC's converged infrastructure portfolio next to blocks and racks, and it's all based on VMware's Evo Rail platform. EMC has added six differentiators. Recover point for VMs for business continuity, VDPA for the backup of a VM, Cloud Array for bursting data to your cloud, EMC's remote services support, vSpecs Blue Manager for a holistic management of the appliance, and vSpecs Blue Marketplace. Businesses these days want to be up and running faster. EMC is tailoring to that need with new software-defined products, allowing businesses to have a faster time to value and a faster time to market. Organizations with a limited IT skill set and a heavy focus on VMware these days can use vSpecs Blue to be up and running faster and to have simple management in their IT infrastructure. Several use cases are VDI, virtual infrastructure, remote office locations, and test and dev environments. VMware is one of the most popular platforms for running uh, workloads in the data center. And increasingly, people are looking for faster and more efficient ways of building out their virtual infrastructures. And EvoRail is the first 100% VMware hyperconverged appliance. And those particular appliances are really going to help people deliver their environments in a more streamlined and simplified way. I think what it shows is that as hardware and software begins to converge, the skills that are demanded of individuals working in the data centre are also converging. We're looking for IT heroes nowadays who can bring together the storage, the compute, the software and the hardware in one bundle to deliver the entire environment, supporting it from top to bottom. Well, I think we're moving away from the very large capex costs and large upfront costs that typified the data centre of the past to a more Lego brick approach to environments where people pay as they grow, pay as they go, buying more infrastructure as they need it rather than upfront. It's important that you put the problems and the challenges first and not focus on the technology. Look at your business and what it's trying to achieve and the challenges it faces, and then see whether hyperconvergence in Evil Rail is a good fit. There are some clear use cases which we've outlined, but be creative. Use your own imagination about how you might use hyperconvergence to solve common problems. One thing I'd like to do is to make customers aware that we recently launched the VMware loyalty program. And customers who already have existing vSphere socket licenses available in their license deal can now use those against Evo Rail as part of the purchase process. And that can significantly reduce the upfront cost to actually acquiring the appliance in the first place. Just like converged infrastructure and the savings that it makes for a business in terms of reducing complexity, time to deploy, a solution like this, which is essentially a data center in a box, reduces all sorts of complexities in terms of there's no need to build a dedicated IT space anymore. It reduces uh, footprint space because essentially now the IT environment is no bigger than the IT equipment itself. Uh, it reduces energy because it's an incredibly uh, energy efficient system that we've built into and integrated into the product. Uh, it reduces time overall because of those uh, previous savings. Time to deploy can be reduced to yeah, an hour uh, as opposed to weeks or even months to build a server room. And all of those things lead to incredible reductions in savings, not just in CapEx, but in long-term operating costs as well. So it's an important, I think, infrastructure change for the business. So what it does in order to achieve that is includes the power backup, in case there's a, an outage, for example, it includes power distribution, and that power distribution can be monitored remotely, so you don't need to have IT people on premises, which is very important. It includes environmental monitoring, so you know what's happening inside the enclosure at all times. It includes the security piece, uh, so of course you keep prying eyes and prying hands away from um, some pretty important IT equipment. Uh, it includes uh, the rack, uh, naturally. It includes uh, the cooling, uh, so that you can be confident that the IT equipment is uh, operating in an optimum way, and it includes, very importantly, a soundproofing element so that it can literally sit in any working environment, people working right beside it, and that have no idea 
that IT equipment uh, is present inside. So essentially it is a, a data center in a box solution that can be rolled into any office environment and deployed more or less plug and play. You can be up and running as quickly as you can set up the IT equipment inside. So now we've heard from the guys around the value of eSpecs, Blue, Hyperconverged, and everything that's going on there. Let's take a little look at the system. So you can see here we have a 2U appliance, which actually consists of four smaller servers within that box, all connected by a 10 gig network. In this case, we have a Cisco network, but this could be Brocade or any, any vendor, in fact. Supported by an APC NetShell to CX cabinet, uh, to make so, so this is a perfect environment for a small robotype solution for a company that maybe doesn't have a comms room, for example. So all of this can be supported by a redundant UPS and cabinet solution from APC by Schneider Electric uh, for organizations that don't have an extensive computer room facility. So let's power it on and see how this sounds. As you can tell, it's a little noisy. But APC have developed the NetCell to CX cabinet. And as we close this up, as if by magic, you can get back to work. So Mike, maybe you can just talk us through how manual a process it's been historically for someone to get a VMware environment up and running uh, pre-Evo Realm. Uh, what would that step normally look like? How much time would that normally take? Well, it's perhaps worth mentioning how many steps Evo Rail takes through. There are over 300 individual configuration steps that take place that have been automated by the Evil Rail engine. Now we summarise those in status messages to about 30 steps, but underneath those 30 steps there are over 300 individual configuration points. And if it isn't Evil Rail that's doing that, some human has to do it instead. Yeah, okay. So previously you'd be jumping around from different servers, configuring servers manually, one by one and then going and log into VMware. So the nice thing we have here about Evo Rail with vSpecs Blue is that all of those configuration points are in a single pane of glass in one place. So we're not having to jump around, plug into different devices. I mean, all that Evo Rail is showing you is purely the variables, as opposed to the layers of UIs and wizards and questions that you would normally get with VMware products. So we've pre-configured all those settings in place. All we need is the things that make that installation unique to that customer their IP addresses for management, vMotion, vSAN, what VLANs they have for virtual machine networking, and settings like NTP and syslog. Okay, so we've pre-populated all of those settings here. So we've named our servers, we've added our credentials. So if we hit validate here now, it's just gonna check that everything is in place, uh, and then we can move on to building our appliance. So the validation takes a few minutes as it checks the settings that have been applied. That's not just logical settings, it's also confirming that the actual appliance has been built correctly at the factory. Okay. And uh, more and more work is being put into this validation process to make sure that we have successful builds at the end of the actual configuration process itself. So uh, we're done. So all of those steps, those manual processes, all automated, two, 300 steps condensed down into what was 15 minutes. And uh, then it leaves us with a nice screen which takes us into the management platform. So. Um, we click through here, we have everything we need here now to manage our VMs, monitor our environment, all the physical infrastructure is detected. So this is an amazing solution, Mike. I think it really is a testament to, to EMC and VMware's commitment to, to really driving innovation in the data center. So thank you for your time today. Thanks for watching.